Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Avery Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Ride Zero, a brand new model for this year. This board features Ride's twin hybrid rocker, which is a little bit more rocker in the nose and the tail than camber through the midsection. So basically, it's a more pronounced rocker on a cam rocker. This is gonna help with presses, as well as ease of entry in and out of turns, but you're gonna retain that pop and snap of traditional camber underfoot. This board is available in 142, 147, 151, 154 wide, 155, 157 wide, 159, and 161 wide. I rode this board at Copper Mountain in the early season. It was sunny, warm, there was slush, ice, chunder, death cookies, your basic preseason conditions. And I rode it with my Rome Black Label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. So the big thing with just about every ride snowboard is that right out the wrapper, they start out stiffer than what they will be. You need to ride them for about an hour and really just hammer them to break them in. But once you do, you start to figure it out. So with this board, what you get is slightly softer tips that's accentuated by the rocker than a stiffer midsection with a little bit of torsional flex, but not enough that when you twist it, it starts to get hooky. Overall, it comes in at right around a middle of the road flex. When you get it right out of the wrapper, it's a little bit past that being a little bit stiffer. And when it comes to stability, you do get chatter in the nose and the tail, but that pretty much dissipates by the time it hits the inserts. So with that said, you get this stable section through the middle. The only time you really feel anything with this board is if you get into really crappy, rutted out, chunky terrain, and you just hammer something hard, you're gonna get jarred a little bit. Otherwise, this board is fairly smooth just all over the mountain. Ride snowboards are known for having pop, and the Zero is no exception. For even being more of like a middle flexing or slightly softer flexing board, it still has a ton of snap. You load that camber section up, it activates that rocker, you get that springboard, and this board gets you in the air. It's great for like ollieing off rollers, side hits, popping over slow signs, things of that nature. You do have to load it up, and you're gonna feel that load underfoot, but it's not so demanding that you're like, oh my God, I'm putting so much work into it to get it to pop. Now, as this was the preseason, I didn't really get to hit any jumps worth anything with what there was. I mean, it was essentially a roller with a lip uh, in the park, but it popped well off that lip. It really does want to get in the air. I can tell by just riding this board that it's going to be stable on just about any type of jump, any size. I mean, obviously the bigger stuff, you're going to want to bend your knees more and know what you're doing. But if you're hitting small, medium features, this board's gonna get you in the air, you're not gonna have to worry about it. When it comes to buttering on this board, you've gotta find that optimal sweet spot right where the camber section hits the rocker. That's where you wanna leverage your weight out and get it over the nose or the tail, just to get it to flex. There is rebound, there is fight with this board, so you've gotta be prepared to muscle it a little bit, because if you don't, you're gonna end up with a soggy looking butter, and that's gonna look like lame ass YouTube vloggers, and you don't wanna look like a lame ass YouTube vlogger. I'm serious. just don't look soggy like that. So be aware that if you're looking for a straight butter stick, you're gonna have to muscle this thing a little bit. And that kind of translates to how this thing jibs. You really do have to put your weight outside the nose or the tail to get it to lock into a press. You're gonna muscle it. You're gonna be pushing into it to go through the feature. And when you hit the end, you're gonna get that rebound and snap out of it. It's a jib board that needs a little speed and a little finesse, but it's not gonna be so limp that it's like my first jib board. And when you get sideways on a feature, that camber section takes over, it cradles a little bit on the feature, but it never claps out. It's nice in that you feel locked in, but you don't feel like it's unstable and you're just gonna snap the board or anything like that. When it comes to carving, the asymmetrical side cut on this board just shines. It grips super well, and part of that is due to the new slim wall construction. So it's basically a cap construction into their slime wall. This creates a thinner ridge that you can lay over on edge and feel it lock in. You can feel that power go into the edge, but it's not like an old school traditional cap snowboard where if you hit something, it's gonna blow out. You still have that sidewall section in there. So, when you are on edge, you can rail this board. And I mean rail it. That camber section really lets you drive and when it hits the tail and you're flexing it, 
right into that rocker section, you can get a little spring and just slingshot out of turns. You're doing hard park carves. You're not doing like full blown Euro carves, laying trenches everywhere. Hard park carves where you're going around features. It's good for short, tight, quick, mellow carves or those ones where you're just laying it over, going around a rail, popping back up, ollieing off a roller, stuff like that. This board does shine when it is on edge. Who's this board for? The freestyle focused, asymmetrical loving, all mountain rider that wants something that's going to break in and be a little bit softer, but still retain its pop. There's something about when you get on a ride snowboard that's dialed, I mean, the side cut, the camber profile, the carbon array, just everything going in there that is awesome. This is one of those boards. You get on it, you can lay a turn down when you need to, you can pop over a roller, ollie over a fat skier kid, slash a slow sign. You know, it's one of those boards. It's playful where you want it to be, but it still retains its pop, which is nice. It's one of those decks that it isn't soggy, but it's not as overly demanding as say something like the bench warmer back there, which really brings more of your A game out. This was a really good board. I really like that new slim wall on there. It really does engage. Overall, very impressed with the zero for this year. Comparable boards, the GNU Rider's Choice C3, the Yes Jackpot, the Capita Indoor Survival. Binding recommendations, the Ride C8, the Rome DoD, the Bent Metal Transfer. This has been my review of the Ride Zero. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you gonna buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video.